I am the mustache man. Hey, welcome back to Project Redoey, the series where I remade classic levels and assets from the original Banjo-Kazooie. When making the Spiral Mountain video, link to the full playlist in the description by the way, I took some time to focus on the various enemy NPCs that populate the level. These guys were fun to work on and provided some much appreciated variety in my workflow, allowing me to practice animation and character modeling. There was a pretty important NPC that was notably absent. So without further ado, here's what I've been working on. Bottles the Mole is one of the most important characters in the Banjo-Kazooie series, appearing in nearly every game. In the original Banjo-Kazooie, Bottles would teach the bear and the bird how to pull off their vast array of moves that they pick up throughout the game. His brother Jamjars would later carry his torch after his, uh, unfortunate accident at the beginning of Banjo-Tooie, and he even appeared in Banjo-Pilot as a playable racer. When bringing this character into the Project Redoey series, I wanted to retain his look from the original game while polishing and updating him to the best of my ability. There's been a few updates to his design over the years, namely in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, where he sports a more stylized look, turning his vest into a suit jacket and giving him a snazzy tie, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, which emulates his original look. His appearance in the latter was a major influence in his direction in this project. As you can see, there were a few creative decisions I had to make in interpreting this character for a modern remake. One big thing to consider was his glasses. In his Smash Bros. appearance, the team opted to keep the polygonal shape of his frames from the original game, and while I understand this decision given his previous iterations, I decided to opt for a smoother circular shape. I felt like the polygonal design was more from the limitations of the N64 hardware rather than a design decision back in the original game. As there's no official high quality renders from the original game of bottles, I guess it's up to interpretation. I did go ahead and create an alternate mesh for the hexagonal glasses either way. Which do you prefer? Leave a comment and let me know. Another key point I'd like to highlight is Bottle's hands. This character is a mole, and so he has claws that help him move around underground. The original model didn't seem to have these claws, but every iteration after included them, so it just made sense to include them as, well, he is a mole. As for how this model came together, well, it's actually pretty simple to the way that I did the Spiral Mountain model, using Bottle's original model as a basis. In 3D modeling and sculpting, retopology is a technique which allows artists to draw geometry over existing geometry, say a high-res sculpt. This is done for a few different reasons. For game development specifically, retopologizing a sculpt will give you a better flow for the geometry, which helps with UV unwrapping and skinning down the line. It also gives you more freedom over the resolution of the model, basically how many polygons it takes to make up the model. So I took that idea and applied it to this project. Rather than down-resing a model by retopologizing a high-poly sculpt, I up the original N64 model in much the same way as the Spiral Mountain remake. I had to pay attention to things like silhouette and form in this stage, referring to the original model when I could and filling in the detail when necessary. For instance, Bottle's feet in the N64 model are just kind of... skin blobs? So I had to make his toes from scratch. When it comes to his vest, I duplicated his body and cut around to form his clothing. After finishing up the model in Blender, it was off to Substance to make the textures. Using a fur brush, shout out to Essler on Gumroad, I was able to easily paint Bottle's fur, pushing it in whichever direction I wanted. I could also blend the fur texture into Bottle's skin and add a nail texture as well for his claws. I did the same for Bottle's vest, giving it the classic checkered pattern and a nice bumpy fabric texture. Substance made this process very quick and easy. It's one thing to make a higher quality model of an old video game character and give that model further detail using modern texturing techniques. It's another thing to bring that model to life with animation and rigging in a way that respects the source material. Now, I'll be the first to admit, animation isn't my strong suit, but I did make a conscious effort to transfer Bottle's original animations to my model, referring to the game's original animations in Banjo's Backpack's model viewer side by side with Blender. I hope the original game's charm shines through in my rendition of Bottle's animations. On another technical note, I want to highlight the way I handled Bottle's eyes in this model. Taking off Bottle's glasses revealed that his eyes are actually just little black dots. 
The real magic lies in the glasses themselves. Inside the glasses model are three layered circles assigned to his eyes, eyelids, and the lenses of his glasses. This allows Bottle's eyes and eyelids to move independently using UV translation. Moving the UV coordinates on the eye disc allows for Bottle's eyes to look around, and moving the eyelid UVs allows Bottle's to blink. Put this all together and you've got the possibility for a more expressive animation. I also made a pretty simple AI system with Playmaker. When the player approaches Bottle's location, he comes out of his molehill and plays a variety of idle animations based on a random timer. When the player leaves his radius, he burrows back into his hole. It's simple, but it definitely gets the job done for this project. Oh, and one last thing. Remember in the last video when I said that I might update the portraits in Banjo's house once I made the models of the characters and environments in them? Well, uh, I wasn't lying. So, that's Bottles the Mole, the first major character I remade for Project Redoing. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to thank everybody for all of the support on the previous episodes, all the comments, the likes, the subscriptions that I've been getting. Uh, it's been kind of crazy seeing this channel grow. I had 50 subscribers when the first episode went up, and now I'm up to over 320. Ubenaka. So I really do appreciate it, and um, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a share, tweet it out, do whatever you can. Um, I really appreciate the support, and uh, I hope that you enjoy. So I guess I'll see you in the next one. Uh, have a good one. <laughs> the hell was that? What was that?